SpaceX prepares for more SN9 static fire tests. Intuitive Machines selects SpaceX for the launch of its IM-2 lander. And we explore some upcoming missions to the lunar surface. On Wednesday, January 13, much to the surprise of SpaceX fans, SpaceX completed not one, but three static fire tests in one day. According to Elon, the purpose of the test was to practice Starship engine starts. In a tweet later that day, on January 13th, he noted that the tests were good progress towards SpaceX's hop-in and go-to-Mars goal. As mentioned, SpaceX fans and followers weren't really expecting three static fire tests. We were expecting a static fire test followed by the SN9 flight test shortly after, perhaps within a day or two, or three. When asked on January 15th if SpaceX was still aiming for the SN9 flight test this past weekend, Elon noted that two Raptors needed slight repairs. In line with his statement, Raptor SN44 was removed the same day. On January 16th, the second Raptor engine was replaced. Not so good news. In a tweet on Saturday, January 16th, senior space editor at Ars Technica, Eric Berger, raised a bit of alarm for SpaceX fans on Twitter, stating that, Regarding the fate of Starship prototype SN9, I have begun to hear bits and pieces that are not great news. He made sure to highlight, though, that there's nothing he considers reportable on what has happened. But he would bet against SN9 flying before February. Despite Berger's tweet, though, it appears that SpaceX is proceeding toward another static fire test with SN9, with the new engine installed. The test is currently scheduled for as early as this week. While we await further updates on the status of SN9, let's check in on progress on other Starship prototypes. SN10 Progress SN10 has now received its aft fins. The aft fins were installed last Thursday, January 14th. So in the event SN9 experiences any anomalies during testing, SN10 should be ready to quickly take its place. Progress on SN17 We're now onto SN17. There's been a lot of progress on SN17 recently. Over the weekend on January 16th, the SN17 common dome section and midlock section were spotted. SpaceX is now adding machinery to the site to support on-site propellant production. This, of course, will further support the company's hop-in and go-to-Mars strategy. SpaceX is moving fast. We're now on to SN18 and BN2. On January 19th, the first component for SpaceX's second Super Heavy Booster, BN2, as well as the first component for Starship SN18 were spotted. The first confirmed BN2 component is the far dome section, while the first SN18 component is a thrust puck. Launching to Mars from Phobos and Deimos. About a week ago, we were discussing futuristic SpaceX restaurants at the top of the high bay, and now it seems like we're back to the subject of futuristic offshore spaceports. Back in June of 2020, Elon announced via Twitter SpaceX's plans to build floating Super Heavy class spaceports. And at that time, a job posting for an offshore operations engineer was spotted on the company's website. It now appears that SpaceX has taken a major step towards that goal, as the company has acquired two oil drilling rigs. The rigs are known as Phobos and Deimos, named after the moons of Mars. According to NASA Spaceflight.com reporters who uncovered the info, the rigs were previously known as ENSCO 8500 and ENSCO 8501. As the previous names imply, the rigs were owned by ENSCO Rowan, which became Volaris in 2019. In August of 2020, the rigs were purchased by an undisclosed buyer for $3.5 million each. Again, it was determined by NASA spaceflight reporters and Twitter users that the undisclosed buyer is actually SpaceX, or more specifically, Lone Star Mineral Development LLC, a SpaceX subsidiary. Lone Star Mineral Development was formed in June of 2020. SN 7.2 is now at the launch site. The test tank was transported to the site on January 20th, where it awaits future testing. And for now, we await more static fire test attempts with SN9. On Wednesday, January 13th, Intuitive Machines announced that it has selected SpaceX to launch its IM-2 lander. IM-2 is the second lunar lander mission that SpaceX will launch for Intuitive Machines. If you remember, back in April of 2020, Intuitive Machines announced SpaceX as the launch provider for its IM-1 lander. The IM-1 launch is currently targeted for 2021, while the IM-2 launch is targeted for no earlier than 2022. 
IM-1 will land at Valishorteri, the largest lunar valley in the region known as the Ocean of Storms, the largest lunar maria. IM-2, by contrast, is slated for touchdown at the moon's south polar region. Both landers will employ Intuitive Machines' Nova C design. In a statement released by Intuitive Machines, President and CEO of the company, Steve Altimus, stated that launching Nova C on a rocket with a proven record of reliability and outstanding value is an assurance to NASA and our commercial payload customers that Intuitive Machines is dedicated to sticking the landing in back-to-back -back moon missions. IM-2 is expected to transport some pretty interesting payloads to the lunar surface. NASA so far has announced one of these, a drilling experiment known as Prime-1, or the Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment-1. According to NASA, Prime-1 will be the first ISRU demonstration mission on the surface of the moon. Prime-1 is comprised of two major components, the regolith and ice drill for exploring new terrain, or Trident, and a mass spectrometer observing lunar operation, or MSOLO. We're in quite an exhilarating time for space exploration. New space companies are now creating the infrastructure for sustainable lunar logistics. For the first time in almost 50 years, US landers are headed back to the moon, and this time they're headed back with some really awesome payloads. There are now currently 14 companies that are eligible to bid for CLIPS, and NASA so far has awarded five CLIPS contracts, two to Intuitive Machines, two to Astrobotic Technology, and one to Masson Space Systems. Like Intuitive Machines, Masson has also selected SpaceX for the launch of its lander. That launch is currently targeted for late 2022. Astrobotic's first CLIPS mission the launch of its Peregrine lander, on the other hand, is set for launch aboard the inaugural flight of ULA's Vulcan Centaur. That flight is currently targeted for late 2021. President and CEO of ULA, Tori Bruno, recently gave us an update of Vulcan Centaur progress via Twitter. He shared a photo of a pair of Blue Origins B4 engines installed on the Vulcan booster for pathfinding operations in preparation for launch in 2021. The Peregrine lander is expected to touch down at Lacus Mortis. Also slated to be on board Peregrine are Spacebit Spider-like rover, the UK's first lunar rover, and Mexico's micro rover Colmina, just to name a few. As I've mentioned previously, Astrobotics Peregrine lander and Intuitive Machines IM-1 lander are both targeted for launch in 2021. Given that point, it looks like we're set for a bit of a SpaceX versus ULA race to the moon. The lander that touches down on the lunar surface first will have the distinguished honor of being the first American spacecraft to land on the moon since the Apollo era, a fact that Astrobotic has already claimed on their website. Will ULA complete Vulcan Centaur in time, or will SpaceX secure this milestone? On Astrobotic's second CLIPS mission, the company is expected to deliver NASA's Viper rover to the lunar south pole via its Griffin lander. That mission is currently targeted for late 2023. Astrobotic hasn't confirmed just yet its chosen launch provider for Griffin.